When you drive through downtown Plano, you can't help but see the bright red rail car from another era. It stands in stark contrast to the modern city and commuter rail line that runs close by. This is Car 360, and being almost 100 years old, it has had a colorful history. Car 360 was one of three cars bought from the American Car Company in St. Louis in 1911 at a cost of $4,800. The cars were delivered in Pullman Green with tile red window sash and they were built for the Texas Traction Company and bore the number 11. Texas Traction started in 1908 and ran from the city of Dallas to Sherman and was later expanded in 1911 to include Denison by purchasing the Denison and Sherman Railway that was already in operation. In 1914, car number 11, along with its two sister cars, were converted to railway post office configurations. Converting the cars consisted of removing the passenger seats behind the rear bulkhead and replacing them with a fully functional post office. This post office was staffed by two postal clerks. There were two mail runs each day between Dallas and Denison, which was the only branch of the Texas Electric Railway to offer mail service. The Texas Traction and Southern Traction companies were merged into the Texas Electric Railway on January 31, 1917. In 1923, the cars were repainted light willow green and cream with a medium brown roof and called goldenrods for the Texas flower. Goldenrods were well-known flowers that grew along Texas highways. This designation meant that they were local runs as opposed to limited runs whose cars were painted blue and cream. They remained this way until 1941 when they were repainted in their current colors of red and light cream. The cars maintained their 1914 numbers as well as their postal duties until the end of their career when the Texas Electric Railway ceased operation on December 31, 1948. After the railway was shut down, all cars were offered to the public for sale at a price of $1,000 for passenger cars and $500 for express cars which handled packages and other large cargo. Car 360 was purchased by Mr. Herman C. Cook of Waxahachie, Texas for placement on his farm as a repository for his gun and tool collections. His brother had been a motorman on car 360 for many years. This was his reason for wanting this particular car. Park director Danny Musica and Mr. Myers visited with Mr. Cook and he agreed to donate the car to the city of Plano on the condition that it be completely restored and be placed on display at the refurbished Interurban Depot. The car, body only, was transported to Plano in late 1984 and placed in a former lumber shed at Haggard Park in preparation for restoration. Over the next several years, Mr. Myers, Carol Cooper, and Henry Tedesco, along with assistance from others, including Plano Park's employees, restored the car to its current condition. Most internal wood items on the car were intact, except for a few custom parts that had to be made. The restoration process took roughly 11 years to complete. Carol Cooper and Mr. Myers worked one night a week and on the weekends to help complete the restoration. The car was moved by the Plano Parks Department in 1996 to its present location in front of the Inner Urban Museum which itself was still under renovation at the time. This required the closing of 15th Street all day Saturday in order to lay temporary tracks across the street so the car body could be pulled by cable to its resting place under the display shed. The car was formally opened to the public for tours in 2002. Today, car 360 is artifact number one and the focal point of Plano's Inner Urban Museum. The car is also part of Plano's fourth grade curriculum. Over 4,000 children a year tour the car along with the Inner Urban Museum as part of a program in demonstrating one of the many examples of how electricity can be harnessed and used. Car 360 and the Inner Urban Railway Museum remain as a remembrance to the early mass transit system that helped bring together many different people from the rural and urban parts of North Texas that otherwise might never have met.